G'day guys, welcome back to Beers and Breakevens brought to you by Blue Wealth Property. They make investing in property easy for you. We had Tony on here last week. If you'd like some more context around Blue Wealth Property, uh, go and have a look at last week's episode. Funny little fucker, Tony. Had a good time with him. Good fella. Uh, absolutely roasted me. So he's. Uh, yeah, <laughs> That's why I liked him. It was good. Yeah, he's pretty quick witted. So <laughs> <laughs> had a good time. Also brought to you by Bloke in a Bar. Go ahead and grab yourself a case of beer this week. And tonight, Wednesday, 6 p.m., Kempy's got his uh, dad's Father's Day range dropping, so make sure you get your paws on these. You can buy them in a package which includes a cooler bag, uh, six-pack of beer. It's got everything. So make sure you go and keep an eye out for those later tonight. Timmy, mate, uh, our scores and ranks for the weekend. You dusted me on the weekend. Did pretty well for yourself, 1340. Um, somehow still went down. It's funny when you get to this point. It's like you beat me this weekend. Went further down than what I did. It's an interesting time of the oh. year. Yeah, you'd uh, you'd think thirteen forty, you'd lead some green arrows, wouldn't you? But thought I went relatively well, but I uh, just got latrelled. Mm. Um, so I dropped like, a fair bit, like uh, almost two hundred spots. I might have been about there two hundred spots to seven hundred and six overall. So pretty disappointing job. And it, it's not been a, a great month to be honest. After being, I was sitting about a hundred there about a month ago and really well set up team wise, trade wise, and. Just a few things sort of haven't gone to plan and, and it's just, I, I touched on on the SC Playbook podcast last night, but I just, I'm really enjoying Supercoach, the run home this season with mm. so many high ceiling players that are lowly owned or even you know, even around that 40 to 50%. It's it's making for some really big swings and it's it's one of the more enjoyable Supercoach seasons, I think. Yeah, obviously I'm a little bit more relevant than what I usually am, but I definitely <laughs> am enjoying it. It's crazy to see, like, as I said, Timmy, uh, Matty scored, Fucking hell, I'm just had a seizure then. Timmy scored uh, 36 uh, more points than me, and I think I went down about 70 spots. So I'm ranked 180 with a score of 1,314 this week. Um, it is going to be. I went down 160 spots. Yeah, right. That's crazy. Yeah, Unbelievable. There you go. Um, yeah, it is going to be. Can't, well, actually, it was all round pretty decent week for you. Tapanay got injured. Uh, Jerome Hughes went quiet. Who else? Uh, Joey Manu went reasonably quiet. Like mm, yeah. uh, a couple of things. A, a couple of your antipod guys did fall your way there. Yeah, the uh, the luck had to turn eventually with these injuries in the the form of Jerome Hughes and uh, and yeah, so oh, on that one. But yeah, still red arrows. But yeah. and it obviously helps going into this week and with that depth strategy that we know Jerome Hughes, uh, Joe Tapney, they're both out. It could be one week, it could be three weeks. We don't really know. Um, again, uh, to see a little bit of green would have been nice, but. Anyway, something fell the way, and to see Joey Manu go low was very relieving. Yeah. Well, Joey Manu went quiet, and he actually texted me and said, I told you so, and I thought, <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, now, uh, special shout-out, uh, one of our main followers, Hobsy, mate. I know you watch every single week. I hear it's your 21st birthday this weekend, so I hope you have a cracking one. Make plenty of mistakes and uh, have a good time. Do you remember your 21st? Yeah, I was. Where was it? Am I oh, twenty first. I was at the Kembla Grange races. Surprise, surprise. So I was at uni down in the. Where dreams come true. Yeah. Oh, mate, it was. I was at uni down in Wollongong, and we uh, a mass big mob of us went down to Kembla Grange and had an absolute feast on that day. So. Uh, I hope Hobbsy's going to the races this weekend. He won't regret it. Yeah, he'll be getting up to something, no doubt. Happy birthday, brother. Have a cracking weekend. Enjoy yourself. Hopefully, we can get you a good Supercoach score this weekend. You went to, uh, was it the 98 grand final for your 21st? <laughs> I, was like, I got caught up with the SG Bull that afternoon, so I wasn't able to make it. Can't win them all. Um, let's have a look at the beers and break even. It's not bad. You've been working on that one or what? Yeah, well, mate, you're pretty sharp. Uh, I hate to admit it, so I've had to up my game a little bit, and here we go. Oh, I think I convinced the bloke in the bar listeners that you're a mad pothead on Monday. <laughs> you so. did, yeah. I've got a weird <laughs> amount of messages. <laughs> yeah. And you know what's even weirder? I didn't even pick up on it at the time. You lost me completely. <laughs> I got all these questions. I went back and watched and thought, ah, no, uh, I know what he was doing that now. That was a huge yeah. win. Yeah. Oh, I was sitting back here pissing myself <laughs> laughing, and no one even noticed. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a quiet reaction. Uh, we have got uh, we have got Matty with us. He's busy preparing for the next show. I'm not going to ask you how your Supercoach team went, because... Honestly, I fucking hate you when it comes to Supercoach. So anyway, uh, now let's have a look at Beers and Breakevens, our group, uh, $2,000 up for grabs here. Jacob, he is leading that one. He's fifth overall, so hopefully Jake can bring home 52K. I believe he's leading uh, Playbook as well. Yeah, so if you could go first and uh, win both of our groups, that'd be awesome. Huge, yep. Yeah. Uh, bearded Clams, Alex has made a return, seventh overall in Supercoach, second in our group. The Dark Knights, Glenn, 17th overall, third in our group. Uh, give him a chance. 18th overall. That's Michael, uh, fourth in our group. And then we've got 
Benry Barba, which is Hugo, who's 29th overall, so in the top 35th in our group. Uh, group doing very well. I think we've got 19 people in the top 100 at the moment for Supercoach. So if my maths is correct, it's about 19%. <laughs> Impressed. <laughs> Very good math. Yeah. Thank Very you. Qu quick math. <laughs> Very good. All right, let's move to Teamless Tuesday. Thursday, um, we've got the Penrith Panthers taking on the Melbourne Storm. Devastating this game's being played uh, with the guys out that it is. Would have been an absolute cracker. For the Penny Panthers, James Fisher-Harris out of this one. Matty Eisenhuth come in. Kikau, he is on the extended bench. Uh, we'll talk more about Kikau as we go, but if I know you're a Kikau owner, it would have been uh, disappointing not to see him back in the team yet. Yeah, it was. Uh, the The Storm matchup is a tough enough one that I'm like... You know, is it? I, well, yeah, well, put it this way. If it was the Titans or, you know, the, I was going to say the Bulldogs, the Bulldogs have reformed. So, or if it was the Knights or someone, I'd be going, please play this game. Mm. Like, of all teams, the Storm I can handle him missing. Yeah. Um, but it is crazy though. Like I'm looking at the storm going right now. If I could put a strike back row up against just about any team in the top eight, I think I'd be considering the Melbourne Storm. Let's work out the edges as well. So Munster plays on the. I'm left. going to stop you there because we've got a question later about uh, okay, it. Okay, okay. Shout out to Hobbs. He's getting very wise in his old age. So that's his <laughs> question. So we'll get to it very soon. Um, for the Melbourne Storm. Meany returns Cameron Munster into the sixth jersey. Uh, I think that Jerome Hughes being out probably plays a role in this. Realistically. Tell you what, if Husey was still there, I would have been very tempted to leave Munster at six and it would have become very, very appealing. Probably not this week for Supercoach, but in general, could have been scary. At one. Yeah, at yeah. one, sorry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, as a non Jerome Hughes owner, very happy to see him out. But, yeah. as a, I mean, the most of us own Munster anyway, but uh, you'd like to think if Hughes does come back, say, next week, then Munster goes back to one. Well, it would be interesting, won't it? Yeah, I, I personally think they have to. Surely. Especially if, if they lose this game. I think they have to fucking yeah, try had something. one game there and scored a hat-trick, so you, you've got to. Yeah. All right, Friday night, 6 p.m., Warriors v. Bulldogs. Uh, the Warriors, I think they might have listened to beers and break-evens last week when we oh. absolutely pillaged their uh, their teamless selection. They got pumped off the back of it. Aiken returns into the second row, so if you're still an Aiken owner, if you didn't tantrum sell there, it might be decent for you. Joshy Curran into the 13, which personally I love. I can't believe he hasn't been on the bench last few weeks. And uh, the saviour. I don't have him. I don't think you have him either anymore, but Valia returns. Uh, if you held him all this while, I don't know. Are you happy he's back or not? Oh, mate, you know my approach. If there's an extra number in your side of this, in your squad at this time of year, then you're absolutely happy. Yeah. And I know we're super coach focused rather than, you know, straight rugby league, but like this is the team the Warriors should have picked last week. And then they, yep. they went to Wade Egan at 5'8 and another bunch of ridiculous changes. And then they flip it back a week later. Like, what's doing? Leave your common sense at the door, okay? Yeah. We've got no interest in God. it. Uh, Tavita Pangai Jr. out for Canterbury. Uh, no major other change for Canterbury. There is uh, Gerald Skelton, who's jersey 22. He's come over from Rugby Union. He has been carving it up in the New South Wales Cup the last few weeks. So uh, he's just been added to their website, and they actually, which is very unlike an NRL club, they, uh, they actually made sure they got a photo of him in the jersey this week and got it up there. So you might see him. Pretty soon, so just keep. And he's been absolutely killing it in Shell Wales Cup. He'd back. have to uh, be relation to to Will I, th I think he's a cousin, yeah. I believe. Yeah, but he's a big bit of gear. I think he's a centre or winger. Uh, he's been breaking tackles left, right, and centre down there in cup. So very, uh, very super coach relevant. Mm. And Canterbury, I mean, their centres and wingers are scoring a heap of points, getting a heap of opportunities. So one to watch there. The Eels and the Rabbits, Friday night, 7.55, should be a cracker. Ryan Madison has been named, obviously had the concussion last week. A little bit of worry around him for the Rabbitohs. Uh, Thompson, he holds his spot on the sting. I had him in my team of the week this week. I thought he was sensational. I think he's going to hold that spot for the rest of the year. And just some other news, hearing that Campbell Graham, he will return next week. Mm. So he becomes very interesting all he of a sudden. He does, but... Uh, I, like, I wouldn't be touching a backline player at the Bunnies with their next four games outside Fair. of potentially Latrell, who we'll, we'll chat about a little bit later as we well. We will fucking chat about Latrell. Unfortunately. One of the better dry fistings. You realise we don't time. have to. I'm more than happy not to. <laughs> he doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, Saturday, 3 o'clock, Roosters v Cowboys. Probably game of the week for me. Really looking forward to this one. <laughs> Ruben Cotter starts in the front row. Uh, the Cowboys have got a full forward bench. We've got a question about this later, so we'll touch on it then. Roosters, uh, not much doing here. Uh, anything to touch on with the Chooks for you? or 
Uh, aside from that lingering cut-off tightness of Joey Manu, no, nothing. <laughs> Tiger Sharks, 5.30. Uh, Joe O, uh, he's been named in the 13. Luke Garner on the extended bench. Uh, personally, I can't believe Garner's not in this 17, so I wouldn't be shocked to see him come it's, in. It's got to just be uh, you're leaving us next year. It has We're to be a spiteful, <laughs> yeah, surely. Um, Dale, he returns for the Cronulla Sharks. He's in at 13. Miller on the wing over Tracy. So Cam McInnes owners, you probably had your time in the sun the last three weeks, realistically. Uh, Dale back, does it hurt Cam for you? It does. In saying that, I think he only played mid-50 minutes last week without Dale anyway. Mm. So really it probably doesn't change too much. But like, you'd be pretty reluctant to play him in your 17s yeah. just because – in those minutes, you know, he might get his 50 or 60, but that's not what we're after at this stage of the season with pretty deep squads. That being said, you know, if, if injuries do continue to hit and you need to play him, you're not going to be too concerned. For sure. And, I mean, some news that we actually missed last week, but huge breaking news that uh, affects most of us are Jazz. He's out for the season with surgery, so leaves me another number short, unfortunately. I was, I was going through through super pods at like sub 3% ownership <laughs> uh, last night, and it's having a few little options Jazz there. just said guru percent. <laughs> It was like 1.2%. I'm like, what's the guru doing? Yeah. Oh, I love me a slice of jazz. Big, big fan. Uh, Broncos v Knights, 7.35 on Saturday night. Branko Lee, he returns in the centres, as does Tamari Martin in the fullback spot. Tessie New drops out of this side. For the Newcastle Knights, big news. Clemmer back in, which is great. Barnett out. Um, I'm hearing, I heard this morning got message that apparently he's got a thumb injury. Uh, so you might not see him for another two or three weeks, realistically. Uh, another one that's going to sting people out there. I was, when I was first saw, I, was, I sort of thought, oh, he wouldn't have too, too many owners. But then I went through the ownership, ownership stats, should I say, and I think it was 6% in the top 100 owned him. I think 4% of the top 1,000. So there's enough there that in a week where we've already lost a, a fair few players that, yeah, yeah it won't help. Yep, for sure. Uh, Sunday afternoon, the Raiders taking on the Dragons at 2pm. Xavier Savage back, no Tapanay. Obviously, Emery Gula comes into the side. Big Red comes onto the bench. For the Dragons, nothing really to touch on here, super coach wise but Ramsey is on the extended bench, so you would have to assume uh, if he's fit, he comes in and plays one, which probably moves Mozambi to the 14 jersey, but... Nothing, no big implication that game is there. The only one is Adam Elliott minutes are going to mm, go through the roof with taps yep. out. So any Adam Elliott owners will be very, very bullish about that. Um, yes, depends how long obviously taps is out for, but I'll be playing ads with a fair bit of confidence this week. I also, in, uh, and only for draft competitions, obviously in deep ones, I, I needed a front row, so I grabbed Emre Gula this week. Do you think he plays decent minutes there starting? Probably not. Uh, Big Red, who, who sort of played decent enough minutes this season, he played his first game back from a, an injury in the Wales Cup last week, killed mm. it. He's on the bench. It wouldn't shock me to see him start this week. Uh, but either way, look, He'd be a solid plug and play, but I, I wouldn't be expecting anything too much. As the waivers work at 4 a.m., you get given your player and all the guys go off the waiver <laughs> and they sit there for two days. And when I woke up this morning at 6 or whatever, looked at it and I got Guler and thought, oh, okay, that's all right. Then I looked at who had been dropped. Some fucker had actually dropped Corey Horsburgh. Mm. And I straight away went, ooh, yeah. probably rather him. Yeah. Don't know if I'll get him now, but we'll see how we go. Uh, I might get Matty to cut that out so the rest of my comp doesn't hear it. <laughs> um, Titans Manly, 4 o'clock Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Aaron Clark, back to nine. Oh. Why? Like fucking anyone there. Yeah, it's like as if they don't. There's not another num number nine on the Gold Coast that could slot in there, but... I mean, lucky you didn't buy him. Uh, tell me about it. Tell me about it. Um, I mean, there is still T Toby Sexton's on the extended. There is still the potential of him coming in to play <laughs> seven. Tanner Boyd uh, moving to nine, and then Aaron Clark potentially playing thirteen. But just play him at thirteen. Work out hooker somewhere else. Just another one where I just sit here. They've and signed go. Sam Verrills this morning. You know, Aaron Clark isn't going to be the nine next year. Just play him at fucking thirteen. It's just another one where I sit here each week and go, why do I? give you these insights, Guru, like, because you could have Aaron Clark sitting in your team right now and I'd be probably 300 points ahead of you, but, mate, uh, for the listeners out there, we, we've got to be got to be as open as we can, don't we? No, as always, and he is 300 points behind me, so we, we, we proceed anyway. <laughs> uh, Foz named for the Manly Seagulls. On Monday, I remember Ken be saying that apparently Foz is going to be named, and I just sat there and went, surely not. Mm. Surely with a hamstring injury, they're not going to play him. I really do think our narrative of Foz coming out and getting injured against the Gold Coast Titans who have signed him next year is a reality that I can see unfolding. I cannot believe he's picked this week. Um, Josh Schuster watch once again. Bullimore and Burbo on the bench. 
he might be their fifth choice left edge back rower now. It is crazy how it's played out. Well, something's going on, isn't there? Like it's he's an, it, even if he it, like it can't be injury because you'd still play him twenty minutes. He was playing sort of fifteen twenty minutes off the bench, and he's clearly a better footballer than Bullymore and Burbo. Something's happening. I'd love yep. to know what it is. I'd love to know what's going on there. And I, it would have been interesting if Fo- if Foz does get ruled out if he wasn't playing this week. I'm not confident they play him. I think they might have gone for KO weeks, to be honest with you. Well, there you go. Like, it, it, Let's say Foz doesn't play this week, which you, you still would have to imagine he's every chance. If Schuster doesn't come in, like he was clearly the next... How are they not are. having Schuster on the bench <laughs> as coverage? Yeah. Yeah. It's... It's well, very probably, interesting. They probably got is Dill Dill Walker. Dill Walker's there. there, yeah. So they'd be thinking him, but like shoots is perfect for the, it. The, uh, 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 Dill Walker's not going to fucking be there next year. Yeah. Why not? I yeah, I, I don't know. It's there's a lot of red flags Something around Josh Schuster. No, for sure. Uh, let's dive into our Blue Wealth Hot Property Player of the Week prediction. We did pretty well last week. I think Timmy had Latrell, who absolutely brained it. I was <clears throat> hiding behind the couch watching it. I had Nico Hines, who also did very well, but not in the Latrell category. This week, I'm going to double down again on Nico Hines, taking on the Tigers, goal kicking. Uh, I think the Tigers... <laughs> might have come back to reality last week after a couple of big Ws, but I think Nico Hines goes big. Who have you got? It's pretty straightforward for me each week, this prediction. I just go to whoever's playing the Titans or to a lesser degree the Warriors, but even more so the Titans. And it's uh, Ruben Garrick. I think he like, potentially is still carrying a little bit of a niggle that it was a hit point thing he had sort yep. of post the origin period. Uh, but I, I think kicking goals in that one, hopefully it's a, a dry game on the Gold Coast and mainly after a disappointing second half against Parramatta, I think Garrett can have a field day and another bloke there that we'll speak a lot about quite shortly is DCE who I think can go big too. Yeah, Garrick, I thought despite Manly being pretty poor the other night, he was great as well. So I'm expecting a big game from him. Let us know who is your Blue Wealth Hot Property Player of the Week prediction for round 22. Leave it in the comments, leave it on YouTube, social media, wherever you're watching this. Let us know who your pick is. Just quietly, round 22, isn't it fucking terrifying how quickly that's gone? We've got three, four weeks of Supercoach left. Incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, three weeks, don't we? 24, yeah. yeah. Jesus goes quick. I was like, Set to be uh, gearing up for a big run to top spot, and that's going uh, pear shaped pretty quickly. So it's good though because you're not you don't stress too much. You can sit there and just watch games and enjoy them that little bit more. It's like you know you might sneak into top hundred, you know maybe fight for top mm. one thousand, but it's a lot lot less stress on games at the moment. I've been strong. I've actually grown hair this year. It's been great. <laughs> uh, let's move to the hot topics of the week and halfbacks is probably the biggest talking point. Of the week, Cleary gone. Uh, some people moved to Jerome Hughes. He's now Gonski. Mitch Moses, Gonski, DCE. Going unders as it stands right now, but I really like his run home over the next few weeks. Talk to us about halfbacks because, I mean, it might be time we start to consider some real pot options. Well, the hand might be forced this week because there are a lot of people who already – who already have Nico Hines at halfbacks. So they don't have that luxury of shifting – shifting Nico between those dual positions and then mm. there's options to move centre wings to full back and different sorts of things. So people don't have a halfback this week. Lots held Cleary last week just to see wh- how things were going to pan out with a few of these halfbacks. So the options, <clears throat> I think the obvious one for me is Daly Cherry Evans. Uh, just with Manly's draw to run home, but the fact that he has a three-round average of 36 points is, <laughs> yeah, he's like, it's very concerning the Parramatta game, it didn't quite happen for him with 32 points. The Roosters game where he scored 46, that was without, I think, eight or nine first-string players for Manly. The week before that against the Dragons, they just didn't show up for that one. Prior to that, he had back-to-back tons. So with a run home against the Titans, Sharks, Raiders and Bulldogs, um, you know, it's not like a dream run. The Raiders have turned things around. The Bulldogs have turned things around. Sharks should be tough, but that is at four times <laughs> par. Uh, I think Chez is your man, and, and especially because they're playing for a top eight spot. We know he's got that really big ceiling on him. Uh, you know, if something does happen to Ruben Garrick, he does take over the goal kicking. So DC is the man for me, but that three-round average is rightly so going to scare a fair few people off. Doesn't scare me off. I actually went with him last week, mm. clearly to him. Um, what's your take on him? Is he your number one halfback replacement, or are you just sort of looking elsewhere? Oh, well, I've got I've got Hughes and Hines at the moment. I'm actually going to wait a couple of weeks on Hughes. I just I, I don't know. I, I this if I 
I feel like if you're going to get DC, it has to be this week. You have to happen for this Titans game. I'd be a little bit worried about the Sharks game and the Raiders game. But once again, if, if you've listened to Tim in particular all year, you should have a deep enough squad that you can pick and choose mm. when you play Chess. And that Titans yeah. game and the Canterbury Bulldogs game looks pretty juicy to me. Uh, I'm not going to go Chess. I think I might be falling into some stubborn ways towards the back end of this season with Ches and maybe another guy. We'll talk about him soon. But I think I'm just going to run with Husey. Um, and, yeah, I, I guess that sort of leads us to our next topic, your trades last week. You mentioned you brought in DCE. Uh, who else did you bring in? Who was your other one? So what I ended up doing, as I often do, I sort of I tend to make – do all my research throughout the week. I, I try as best as I can to have trades sorted for the podcast, but being so early on, so many things change, particularly around team changes, ins and outs, all sorts of things. So uh, I, I tend to make my decisions sort of like most, just later on in the week. I ended up, up actually pulling two trades. Uh, and the the reasoning behind that was I got rid of DCE, sorry, DCE, Cleary and uh, Caelan Ponga, who contributed a great, Four points to my score this season. Buddy Wim to him. Yeah, Buddy Wim. Always up to something. Shenanigans. So they went out for me. And the thought process there was, I now only have one trade left, which is very sort of uncharacteristic from my mm. super coaching. I normally save trades for those last few rounds, but you know, a lot of injuries have sort of forced the hand a little bit. Um, I just, like, so I had Nico at halfback and Teddy at fullback. If either of those players were to go down and, and not play at some stage in the week. Well, I'd be copying an A anyway if I had mm. Ponger and Cleary sitting there. So I was like, you know what, stuff it. I'll stack my squad. Depth is really, really good across the board. And then that gives me better sit-start options last week. Uh, gives me better sit-start op- start options this week. What it also allowed me to do was, by getting rid of KP, I could switch Ruben Garrick to fullback, which means I now have the jewels between Val and Garrick at CT Dub fullback. So I'm covered at fullback. Uh, all my halves are playing, so I'm covered there. My jewels across other positions are all good. So while I've only got one trade, and that's great, like not where you want to be, you, you'd love to have you know minimum sort of three up your sleeve, which very few do. Uh, I've got one trade left for an emergency. It won't be being touched, um, and yeah, so that's how I'm sitting for the rest of the season. And I've got just about everyone I, I want to own. I, I was happy. Again, we will get to it soon, but. To go against the trail with his run home, Joey Marner, we've spoken at him, would love to have him, but I've gone the antipod route with him being 900k playing centre, uh, yep. paid off last week, let's see how that goes in coming weeks. But yeah, so ultimately I'm pretty happy, but it does make the, the old trade chat for myself pretty boring for the next month. How disappointing was Adam Dewey? I, <clears throat> God, it was frustrating. Like, it's, sometimes guys can play well and just not score super coach points. Mm. He was dreadful. He was dreadful all round. He, he, watching that game, he just with Hastings out, Luke Brooks out. You just thought he's going to he'll touch it three times a set. He'll be in everything. I mean, he does when they're there. To be fair, yeah. and he just looked really lost without an organising halfback. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what Brett Kamali does with him this week and and how he how he looks to counteract that performance last week because he was really poor and Dewey doesn't have many bad games of footy. Uh, I'm still happy with him as a purchase. Even last week, he did nothing. He set up a try for kick. And I looked at the score at the end of the game thinking, oh, he'd get 30. He had 53. Yeah. So he's in that similar mould, super coach wise to Cleary's and to uh, Nico Hines, obviously not as good, but he just accumulates across so many different categories. So even when he does have bad games, like his floor is quite high. Yeah. Um, but that being said, like still very concerning as an owner. Tough game this week against the Sharkies, but then the, there's a couple of nice games later on. So, yeah, it was disappointing. I sort of feel like he still owes me 50 points from the weekend, though. I had just about 100 locked in against mm. Newcastle. I thought he'd go berserk. Well, going into that Sunday, it, two fairly ordinary games of footy to watch. The Doggies' cows end up being entertaining enough, but you know you sort of lean on your super coach players. And I thought Val Holmes, sweet, huge ceiling playing the Dogs. Dewey, I was like, sweet, he's gone one fifty here against the Knights. Um, well, they get fifty and thirty between them. So should have gone for drinky, my friend. Should have gone for drinky, my main guy. Yeah, saved my sorry ass in draft this weekend. Now we're just talking about trades and just circling back a little bit with halfbacks. I forgot to ask you if you were going to go for a pod halfback moving forward. Um, you know, there's your Dearden's, there's your Sam Walkers, there's your Luke Kearys. If you really like to play with fire, is there anyone jumping out at you as far as a pod play? Look, I'm pretty keen. I think DC is the man in terms of pods. 
like the Cowboys draw doesn't excite me as much as I thought it, it would have earlier. It, it's they've got a really good matchup against the Warriors in two weeks, but outside of that, they play Penrith round twenty five. They've got then the Roosters and Rabbitohs in there. So uh, look, I'm not that kid on, on keen, should I say, on say a Dearden going through. You know, Sean O'Sullivan was decent last weekend. Uh, I'm still a little concerned that Kurt Falls has been named on the extender bench, will come into this side and potentially take over the goal-kicking duties. Uh, Adam Reynolds doesn't do much for me. Jamal Fogarty doesn't do much for me. Sammy Walker, maybe. Um, like, we know he's got that ceiling, but again, the Roosters have a tough run home. Made it... Like, Ben Hunt, potentially. So... He does everything for that Dragon side. We know he's got a big ceiling on him. He hasn't gone big this season yet. He doesn't have a ton to his name, but he can go big. Games against the Raiders, Titans, Tigers and Broncos on the run home. So, like, to be honest, of all the, the pod options, I'd probably be, be leaning towards Benny Hunt if I wasn't going DCE. <sighs> I'd never consider Ben Hunt. It's not a bad shout. He's got mm. a decent little run there. Yeah, yeah. He, can, um, he can go big on his day. Yeah, and you are right. If the Dragons are going to do anything, it has to be him. Shocking that he hasn't scored a single hundred this year. Like it he's gone close yeah. a couple of times. But um yeah, I know he, he was a very popular guy in our draft competition at the start of the year. Our good mate, Heavenly Hands Hevner, managed to get his <laughs> paws on him. Um so, Yeah, okay. Halfback's gonna be very, very interesting. So even even last season, what he averaged sixty seven points. He had a one sixteen there, he had a one thirty two against uh, my beloved Raiders, so you know, we know he's got the big scores in him. Uh, but I don't. If you're looking elsewhere, I don't mind him. Yeah, I, I just think that I, I can get by for the next two weeks without Jerome Hughes, and then when he does come back, I think by then he's going to be a pod within himself. And that's the other thing, mate. Like, like yourself, if you're positioned well enough that you can cover Jerome Hughes this week, and, and let's say you've got, you do have Nico Hines at halfback, and, and you're not stuck with Cleary and Hughes there, I think just hold him a week. Mate, there's a world where I wouldn't have played Jerome Hughes this weekend say, anyway. Yeah against Penrith. So sure. it's not a huge... Yeah, I, I, I'm just okay to hold and see what happens. Now, mate, our last topic uh, is one that I do not want to talk about, but we will. Uh, I've held a boost all season, <laughs> thinking the last week, as per use, uh, teams will be decimated by restings and everything. Unless you're the Penrith Panthers, who have pretty much got half their team out as it is right now, is anyone going to rest? I don't know if anyone's going to be in a position where they can. I don't think they will, mate. Like, it's... Mm. It, Every position from second to eighth, there's something riding on. No one's going to be comfortable. I don't see with the Cowboys run home. I, look, I think round 25, the Cowboys and Sharks are going to be playing for that second spot, which is the home final. And like, it's not two Sydney sides playing for a home final. It's the difference between Townsville and Shark Park, which is a, a substantial difference. So I, I just don't see yeah, how any team will have the luxury of resting outside of Penrith. Even Penrith, Ivan Cleary has been very reluctant in past seasons to rest players in that final round of the season because he, he seems to want that continuity and, and that, you know, his team gelling as much as possible prior to the first week of finals. So, uh, yeah, your little uh, play to, to boost that final round on the with the hope of mass outs and restings, I, I would be thinking that I could get in some, not necessarily pods, but you know, high ceiling plays with good matchups prior to that and utilise those trades. Because if we get to round 25 and there isn't restings and there isn't injuries and COVID outs and these things we've anticipated, you use three trades and you end up sitting there going, oh, I've got to sit three play guns in my team that I don't really want to do because yep. my squad's stacked. So, you know, there is that really, really big pod play that if it does occur and you've got it, like you could make up the biggest jumps, but... As it stands, I think I'd be looking to move, use those trades earlier. Um, all that being said, we've lost Joe Tappany this week, massively yep. owned. We've lost Jerome Hughes, highly owned. Ryan Madison, decent ownership, is is in doubt. So there are injuries cropping up. Trades are so scarce. Uh, Darusi had his stats last week, and I think the top 100 ranked teams, or might have been even in the top 10 or top 100, there was 2.3 trades left. So this was before people had to move on Nathan Cleary as just one yeah. player there. So you could nearly assume that's probably 1.3, if not already, by the end of next week. Um, so with trades so scarce, yeah, I, you can make some serious moves with those those four trades. 
Yeah, I, I really, I did love the idea of the the restings in the last week for the last eight or nine weeks. But yeah, the more I look at round twenty five and how it's shaping up, who's playing who, where they are on the ladder. I've actually, I've sorry, mate. No, well, like, <laughs> e- e- even with the Penrith Panthers, like their halves are both missing at the moment. James Fisher Harris is about to sit for two weeks. Viliami Kikau. He's had a week off. He might have two weeks off. I don't know if I need to rest. Isaac Tungo and Taylor May, they're both mm. fucking 19 years old. They'll be fine. Um, yeah, so I just – I really worry mm. that there aren't going to be many restings this yeah. year. So I do have – I've got Ads' article for this week, not yet up on their seed play, which side it'll go up later today at some point. Beers and break Evans exclusive. Beers and break Evans exclusive, yeah. This is hot shit. So 17 of the top 100 teams – Oh, my goodness. And seven of the top 50 are now out of trades. Say that again. 17 of the top 100 teams and seven of the top 50 are out of trades. A further 32 have just one trade left. Only two teams in the top 20 have four trades left. Bear in mind that nine of the top 20 teams held Nathan Cleary, including the top two teams. That is So that's mental. So, so did I just hear that correctly, that almost 50 of the top 100 have two trades or less? So what you just said? Yeah, so of the top 100, on average, there's 1.8 trades left. How oh, good. Yeah. Mm. So that, uh, that full article with all the details, the charts and whatnot, will be up on site, scpaper.com.au, this afternoon. But hectic. So you, you sitting there with four trades, licking your lips going, how good. Well, I feel like a really shit bloke wishing a heap of injuries upon guys just doing their very best out there, but... <laughs> I wouldn't hate it. We're a sick breed. We're a sick bunch of supercoach players. No doubt about it. All right. Let's move into the questions sent in by you guys this week. First one comes from Cody Sosso says, May or Suali'i? Tough one. Both got pretty tough matchups. I would assume that is probably play this week. Yeah. So sorry. Who's he going to play this week? Yeah. Which one would you go for? This week, May or Suali'i? Suali'i for sure. Yeah. I was really concerned as a May and Toto owner last week. They weren't getting a lot of quality ball uh, out wide from, from O'Sullivan and Salmon. So uh, I'm looking to sit <clears throat> potentially both of those guys this week. I'll, I'll probably end up playing one of them. If Kikau plays, I'll probably lean towards May. Just being on O'Sullivan's edge with yeah. Kikau, I think they get more ball than probably Toto's edge. But uh, in that one, like... Penrith up against the Storm, Roosters against the Cowboys, which is tough, yes, but it's a day game at the SCG. They're humming in attack. Uh, Suoliti, hell yeah. Let's move to this one from Kiwi Trent. Says Burton or Brown, a partner Munster for the run home. Um, interesting one, Burton. He's like, even last weekend, I, I thought he played well, um, scored a try, set up another. I don't think he scored incredibly well still, though, did he? 85, and no, yeah, right. was in every. But considering try and try assist, <clears throat> you know, I don't know. Yeah, he, he was in everything. I, I, I love Dylan Brown at the moment, the form he's in. I think that his game against Manly was exceptional. I think without Mitch Mosey, he is going to really step up over the next few weeks. So, gun to head, I don't mind Dylan Brown. What are your thoughts? There's a bit to dissect because you mentioned Mitchy Moses being out. That's seeing Dylan Brown get a lot of ball on that left edge. Um, so, like, it impacts people looking to sit V-start or even sell Mike Acevo. It's great news for Sean Lane, who is on an absolute tear. Um, yeah, obviously really good for him. Mitch Moses could be back as soon as next week. Mm. That being said, it doesn't mean that Brown's not going to get a lot of ball still because he does anyway and he commands it. Um, Burton, if you're going Burton, it has to be this week because you need him for the Warriors matchup. After that, he faces the Eels, Sharks and Manly. Now, Para have a tough draw as well. But Para are also a better side than the Dogs. Dogs fans will blow up to that because they pumped them earlier in the year. But I'd be more confident in those tougher games playing Brown than I would Burton. Yep. Um, so, look, look if, if it's a head-to-head focus question and you, you've got to do what I head-to-head game this week, I'd go Burton because I think he goes nuts against the Warriors. Uh, if you're overall focused, I like Brown to score more on the run home. And I guess that takes us to another question. At Aaron Dance says, Burton, a buy against the Warriors head-to-head player in the game to make the final. You obviously like that play? I like it, yeah. Yeah, big fan. Okay, let's move to, you mentioned uh, Mitch Moses out, so it helps Dill Brown, also helps Sean Lane. This one, this one, this one might, might tear your little heart in half just quietly from Ward E. Says, Murray or Lane, two of your absolute favourites. You're a Lane owner. You don't have Murray yet. I don't think you will get Murray now. Which one would you rather have? Yeah, I've uh, 
I've sucked about it all season, but I, like I wanted to start here with Murray just because I love the bloke. I know how good he is, and then that l- missed out on the trials because he had a little. I think it was a hamstring niggle or something. I yep. was worried about his minutes, so I avoided it, and I haven't had him all season. And it's just just killed me. Not even super coach well, I'm just not having him sitting there in my team, and I won't be able to get him because of all these injuries elsewhere. Um, or maybe I'll just pull the bite the bullet and use my last trade on him. Um, it's got to be Cam Murray, and mate, with the bunnies run home, tough games. They're, they're not going to have blowout wins in the, this final month, so he's going to be playing big minutes. They need him playing big minutes. He just like he had three tries this in eighteen minutes on the weekend, yep. one hundred and thirty points. As good as Lane has looked, uh, Murray's sort of base looks better to me. His ceiling looks better, so it, it's Cam Murray. And, and the other thing, because of injuries or suspension to Nathan Cleary, injuries to Ryan Pappenhaus and Jerome Hughes, etc., people have had to fill in those positions. So. Cam Murray's still really low ownership, whereas had these not happened, Murray would be like 90% ownership because everyone yeah. was ready to flock to him post-Origin, but they haven't been able to do it. Um, so, yeah, Murray's the man. I think you might have just uh, won me over there. I think I might uh, use one on Murray this week. If for nothing else, just to spite you, which that, yeah. which gets <laughs> me up in the morning. So uh, let's move to our next question. This one <laughs> comes from Alex MRL 7 Really interesting thoughts on Tamalolo and his minutes. Cotter and McLean are back. Uh, obviously, Hamiso, he is on the wing still. So, Kyle Felt's out. You've obviously got Jake Granville. He's not in the side at the moment. So, you've got a four-forward bench. Cotter back into the starting team. McLean off the bench. I am worried about Tamalolo's minutes. I probably won't have a choice. I think I'll have to play him regardless because Tapanay's out. Uh, but I'm less confident on Tamalolo this week than what I probably have been at any other point during the season. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, if we look at his minutes the last two weeks, 51 and 54, that's obviously coincided with Ruben Cotter returning. Uh, I think what would probably benefit us is if Kyle, Kyle Feltz due back, it should be next week, which would put Hammer to the bench. Yep. would only help. Uh, according to him, mine's a little bit, because he's played big minutes all season, Tamalolo hasn't rested at all, missed round 12, and that was it. Um, you know, the lights probably ease his minutes off a little bit, but again, they're playing for a home semi. Like, they're looking good for top four, but they're, I w- they're not locked in yet, are they? So mm. they, can't, they can't really afford to, to take the foot off the, the pedal at the moment. So I still think he'll get decent minutes. I'll still play him with confidence, but... You know, Cotterback's not going to help. Yeah, definitely not going to help. I'm I'm very nervous about it. Next one comes from Jacob uh, Babu. Says, plenty of trades worth getting Molotalo. We've both got him. Sharks, I, I saw a quote from you during the week about uh, the Sharkies run home. It is sensational. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I've lost a little bit of confidence in Molotalo over the last month. Uh, but... Their run home is sensational. I think I will be playing him quite a bit if you had plenty of trades. Say if you were sitting in my position, you didn't have him. Would you grab him? I like him, yeah. I, I like their Sharkies outside backs. I think they're playing some really good footy. Matty Moylan out doesn't help because he's on that left edge with Muli Talo. Mm. Uh, so now Nico does play, likes to play both edges. He, he, do, he really does roam as a half. Um, so he'll still get decent ball, but I do think probably it's going to favour that right edge of Jesse Raymond uh, and now Lockie Miller will go on. Icavalu's fallen off the old radar, hasn't he? Yeah, he's on the extended. I, mm. I'd i keep an eye on Icavalu. Yeah, I, I thought they would put Icavalu for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, on Mulitalo, it's $410,000, and that's off the back of a five-round average of 41 points. So you, know, you might have two trades there where downgrading someone – to, you know, like via George, you might be able to go, say, Cleary or Hughes to Muli Talo with his great run against Tigers, Manly, Bulldogs, Knights, which may then allow you to trade, say, a mid-ranger like a, a, a Max King to, say, yeah. Ken Murray. So in that instance, like, not only are you getting a bloke who has a big ceiling with a nice draw, but it could facilitate a really good trade elsewhere. So uh, I quite like Muli Talo. I, I'm with you. I'm a long way from being as confident as I was a while, um, you know, a month ago, but... Even in that run, he played Melbourne Cowboys, Panthers, Bunnies, and then the Drags last week where he didn't score real well. Um, but like, they're tough games. Yep. So like, I know me personally, I sat him in a lot of those games, and he comes into his soft draw now. I was talking to a bloke yesterday morning, and we, he, he was asking me about Mulatalo, and he, and he said, he's got him. He said, oh, and I sort of said, I'm not overly confident with him. And he said, yeah, I like the draw, and I'm going to have to play him. He said... I'm almost considering buying Talakai as well for this run home because his ownership like has dropped it. and he's dirt cheap. I like for it. For what Talakai can do, uh, I, th- I think he's like 450 off the dome. Oh, 450 on the dot. Yeah. Basically, I'm good at what I do. Don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
basing 34 per game. So 31 last week, 45 the week before that, 33, 44, 35, 44. That base is immense. So, like, he's still playing awesome footy. He's just yep. not getting these attacking stats. I, I really don't mind with, with obviously everyone selling off and people will say, you know, that I've been, I've been riding for a long time now and saying that big score's coming. Where is it? Where is it? But... I, I don't know. I think it's coming. I think there'll be one, if not two tons in this last month of footy for him. And as a buy, I don't mind him. And Jesse Raymond's the other one at 3% ownership in the top 100. I think he's 3% ownership in the top 1,000. With Moylan out, as I said, right edge getting more ball. He's starting to get back to a better base as well, mm. basing 30 the last three weeks. Um, you know, I don't mind Ramey as a, as a real big pod. Next one comes from a Topin. Uh, Tapane out. Do we look at Hudson Young? I think I just heard little Timmy hit the bottom of the table just quietly. I'm a huge Hudson fan too as well, to be fair. Um, I don't mind him as a pod. Now, he is a classic. If he doesn't score a try, he'll get you 30 to 40. But if he does come up with something, which I think in this run he can, and I think he's more and more a guy... It's crazy. I think he's become a guy that they just throw the ball to and mm. hope something comes off the back of it. So... I don't mind the Hudson shout. I'm going to hold Tapanay. I don't think he's going to be out for an extended period. I think you'll see him back within two weeks. But Hudson, in general, is a pod. I really like it. What are your thoughts? Yeah, and invariably when they do throw the ball to him as a Hail Mary for him to pull something out of his ass, he does it. Does it, yeah. so good. Uh, look, you know he's got 120s in him. You know he's got 40s in him. You, it, It'll be up to the individual to say, all right, is he going to turn on the fireworks for the run home? Uh, like... I don't know. Uh, he'd be an exciting player to own. Mm. Um, look, if I think you're tossing up between, say, him and a Cam Murray, I think you've just got to go Cam Murray. But well, he plays 80 minutes every week. He said he's a focal point of their attack, so I don't mind it at all. On taps, those rib cartilage ones are funny ones because it's very pain tolerant. It, like, it could be one week. It could be three weeks. Mm. And and it's a really hard thing to assess hearing what NRL Physio um, speaks about. It's... It's such a week-to-week proposition. They can't um, definitively say he's gone for three or he's gone for one. It'll they'll assess it each week. So it's you know maybe holding him for one week is the play. I think Tapanay's pain will go up and down depending on whether they win or lose this week. Yeah, I think if they win, all of a sudden they're going to need him. They can still make <laughs> yeah. finals footy. Uh, I, I think. I think considering the situation. And just you know better than me from j- just the footballer I see in Tapanay, I think he'll be back sooner rather than later. Fingers crossed anyway. I guess that our next question was uh, from Jakey B, sell Tapane or hold? I guess we sort of answered that. I'm going to hold for a couple of weeks. Gun to your head right now. Sell, hold? I think if you can cover him, hold for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting one here from Taylor Marks, sort of similar to your situation. Ranked 400th, one trade left. Do I hold for injuries or just punt on a pod? Pod, I guess it's... Uh, how long is a piece of string sort of stuff here? It depends on your situation and stuff. But um, seeing how injuries are going at the moment, I'd probably lean towards hold personally. What do you reckon? Hold the trade. Thank me later. Yeah. Next one comes from Harry Mack. 16. Is Dykes a good trade in and is his spot safe? I like Dykes. Uh, very talented footballer. I did say last week I'm a little bit worried about his super coach output. Um, <clears throat> scored 19 on the weekend. He's going to need attacking stats. They will come. I have no doubt about it. But... Let's say that he broke three tackles and scored a try on the weekend as well. He would have got 45. So that's a bit of a red flag to me. Yeah, even more so. I think it's just the job security, isn't it? Yeah, there's like, that as well, there, yeah. There's, Miller could play fullback as early as this week. Like he may not, but I think with how impressive Miller was earlier on in the season in his debut NRL game, I'd, I'd just be worried that he'd flick there. You mentioned Ikevalu potentially being a sneaky one to come on this week. Uh, I just think it's a little bit... He's also only available at fullback, I believe. So if you bring him in there and you might have, say, a Teddy or a Latrell only available at fullback, you're leaving yourself very short if he gets dropped. Yeah. Our next one comes from Kyle Robbins. Says, trade kick out of Cotter if he doesn't play. Um, yeah, I, if kick out doesn't play this week, I can understand you trading him. But I'm more interested in the Cotter side of things here. Uh, 55 on the weekend. Uh, does not look like a guy that's ever had a hamstring injury in his life mm. at the moment. He's just a maniac. Uh, four forwards on the bench. It is the same problem with Jason Taumalolo. Do we see Cotter being more than a 60-point player on the run home if they keep going this way? What do you reckon? I think so, just because mm-hmm. he's gone. Um, he'll find attacking stats, can find a line break, just a, a very good footballer. Uh, and just quickly on kick out, with where Penrith are positioned, they're not going to play him if there's any concern of any injury aggravation or anything like that. Yep. So I think if he gets named to play and to start, you, we're pretty safe with him. Yep. Um, and on Cotter, yeah, like 
great pod to have. He's still surprisingly highly owned amongst mm. top-ranked sides. A lot held on to him. I guess just on kick out as well, he is the first game, first game of the week. This yeah, week against yes, Melbourne Storm. Very so thank one. God if it was Sunday, you'd be in some curry. Um, next one comes from Dylan Earl Turk, big fan of the show. Whenever we answer one of Dylan's questions and we uh, give him a shit tip, Monday morning you can bet your dick there's a DM waiting for me. Let me know that uh, he had it right, we had it wrong. He absolutely loves it. He's tossed up Dylan Edwards this week as a pod. Um, Mate, Dylan Edwards on the weekends. I thought he was going to come off that stadium, off that ground in a fucking body bag. He was oh. everywhere. Um, Dill, he's always been a solid option. I think you can lock in a sixty-point average over the next four weeks or whatever it is. Probably won't go above seventy. Probably won't go below fifty. I don't know. I I, I just think there's elsewhere that you can <clears throat> elsewhere you can look. You're right there, mate. No, no, I'm not. Go. <laughs> I don't, don't, <coughs> don't cop sort of too, too much uh, negative feedback, which I'm, I'm very grateful for, and I'd like to keep it that way, so thank you. But I did have a DM during the week. Everyone knows you're a teddy. They've got to take care yeah, of you, mate. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, coddle me. I did have a, uh, a message during the week, and it was a bloke saying, hey, mate, I love the show. I appreciate all the efforts. But oh, he goes, I've got to ask. He goes, I've been following yours and, and the boys' advice all season, and I'm coming 25,000. So I'm just like, is it, is it me doing something wrong or, like, what's happening? I'm just like, I don't know. Maybe it's shit advice. I don't know. Maybe my boys, you meant Maddie. Yeah, yeah, it was Maddie. Yeah, the, yeah, the same bloke's also got, yeah, 34 trades left, so it could be that. Uh, Dylan Edwards, I don't know. He's just never really excited me as a super coach player, but... You know, it, it's obviously changed now. He lifted with Luai and, and Cleary out. He got a little bit more involved in attack, but 608k, it's a hard draw. Like They go Storm, Rabbitohs, Warriors, Cowboys. Mm. Um, I just think when we're talking fullbacks and there's Latrells, Tedesco, so many, like, if you don't have them, and like Garrick, Manus, I think there's better options than him. Yep. Jack Hudson, 97, says, I want to upgrade from Kiraz. Who's the best CTW or 2RF for the run home? I'm sort of starting to think maybe Cam Murray uh, could be the way to go. We already spent, mentioned Mulatalo. Assuming he's already got your Manus, your Garricks, these sort of guys. Is there anyone that sort of stands out for you? No, I, I think you're right. It, like, if we're assuming they've got the, the, the pick of the litter at CT Dub then Cam Murray's the, the standout. Mm. Olakowatu could be an interesting one if you don't have him. I think most do now. I have no idea what he's going to toss up the next month. Yeah, clueless. I'm hoping it's big because my draft team is heavily fucking <laughs> relying on him. But anyway, now, biggest question of the week for me, Christian Kennedy. No Latrell. Can I keep doing this? <clears throat> I am digging the heels in, I think. I think I'm going to go no Latrell and just hope that the good teams over the next few weeks slow him down. Um we said last week we'd be stoked if he went under 120 against the New Zealand Warriors. He was on 16 after 25, and I put the feet up and thought, how fucking good. I'm going to carry on like a dick on Wednesday. And then he scored 135 points or something in 35 minutes. It was fucking unbelievable. Yeah. Andrew Demetrio is definitely a super coach player, and he didn't own the trail, Mitchell. <laughs> They're like super coach records were about to be broken if he played that last 20 minutes. <clears throat> um, my opinion hasn't changed on him from last week at all. Like everyone saw that coming against the side that the Warriors threw out. Um, we had the decision to trade him in last week or not. As you said, I, you know, I was really hoping it might have been a one ten, one twenty, end up being one fifty. Very killer, but it doesn't change the fact that he's got that brutal run home. Uh, I'm still not entirely. The bunnies have turned a corner. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not convinced by them entirely just yet. Um, Luttrell's made a, a phenomenal difference to them, but we know he has pretty limited touches in a game. They're extremely efficient, but you know if, if they can be kept relatively low scores in this next month, which I think there's every chance they do, um, I'm happy to to any pod Luttrell for the next month. It's not going to be enjoyable watching him, but <laughs> but I, I can see him scoring some fifties and sixties in that time. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, again, if we're looking at head to head and overall. Head to head, maybe because he's got that huge ceiling, you do mitigate the risk of assuming uh, being so highly owned that a lot of your opposition over the next couple of weeks, if you're still alive, will probably have the trail. All right, maybe it makes sense to do it. But overall, if you're serious about making up ground, I think you've got to go to the antipod play, don't you? I was sitting there on the weekend watching Latrell with my missus and all of her family. They're all South Sydney fanatics. And uh, every time Latrell touched the ball, they were up cheering, and I was just sitting there 
quietly, not saying a thing, just filthy myself. And then the moment he went off, I jumped up with the hands yeah. up, fucking fist pumping, celebrating. They're all just looking at me going, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I don't want to explain and, it to and, you. Yeah. I'd rather you not know. Just and, ignore me. And like, those, the tries he scored, one from Toru Harris fell off and just didn't want to have a crack at him at all. The other one, there was that enormous gap opened up around mm. the ruck in pretty well the middle of the field. The other two just slid out the back and got those tip-ons, which was, again, just they were cut such short. Their numbers were The Warriors edges defense. shocked me, yeah. So it's, you know, is, that, is all that going to happen again this week against the Eels? And then Penrith and Cowboys and Roosters? I don't think so. We speak like the two truest <coughs> non latrell owners oh, yeah. of all time, and I love it. All right, last question from Hobbsy. Uh, Isaac Tungo, Taylor made this week against John Seve Coates. Um, I'm really worried about the Penrith halves. We've spoken about this the last few weeks. It's turned out to be spot on. Against this matchup, though, I can see why people could be interested in playing Isaac Tungo and Taylor May. What are your thoughts? My first thoughts are Viliami Kikau, please play. Yes. Really, I mean, kick out running at John's. Oh, that excites me. So, <laughs> it, it's a weak edge, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very. I, I can understand playing Isaac Tonga. I still worry about May. I just think it's another two passes you have to rely on after Sean O'Sullivan. He plays so flat into the line. That's my mm. only concern. Yeah, uh, and but uh, like it's a great, great point from Hobbsy and. You know, for people tossing up Tungo and, and Toto, I think it probably – or sorry, May slash Tungo and Toto, you probably go for that left edge. Yeah. Um, yeah, like maybe play one of them. Uh, I, I'd, I'd go May just because I think wingers in the current super coach climate mm -hmm. have that – like the highest ceiling. Just those easy tip on tries they just stroll over for. Centres often still have to do a fair bit of work. Uh, I like Taylor May. I'm going Isaac Tunga. We'll see. We'll put a case of beer on it or something this week. One of Kempy's in there. One of Kempy's, yeah. 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 One of the giveaways. Done. I like it. Um, happy birthday, Hobbsy. Have a cracking weekend, mate. Uh, thank you for all your support over the last few years. Let's move to the captain's options this week. We obviously both spoke about our Blue Wealth property guys. You got Ruben Garrick. I've got Nico Hines. I think I will captain <laughs> Nico Hines this week um, against the. I've got the wrong round up in front of me. Tigers, I should have known. I think I will captain Hines against the Tigers this week. Uh, what are you looking at? Yeah, so that's the 5.30 Saturday game, Scully Park out in Tamworth. That'd be awesome. Um, I am leaning towards Nico as well. Yeah. Uh, and, like, there'll be four games prior to that. So if my team's going poorly uh, and I'm angry at the world, which is likely, I might just say stuff it and go with Garrick or DC on the Sunday against the Titans. But... Uh, I, th I think Nico's pretty hard to go past, isn't he? Yeah, I think I'll go Nico and then might VC, I don't know, maybe one of the one of the Roosters Cowboys, maybe an IPAP <coughs> against the Rabbitohs might, might be an option there. I, we obviously don't have Latrell, so we won't be going him. If I had a Dill Brown, I might consider him. Sean Lane might not be a bad shout for you as a VC. Yeah, for sure. Well, I've actually, my only two non-active players this week are Grant Anderson and, as it stands, Viliami Kikau. So I can't loop. Because they're right, in the first okay. game of the round. But, uh, you know, if someone else pulls out or if I was, uh, I've got it on Tedesco in the game before Nico Hines. Um, if I did change my tact a little bit and end up going with the Manly game, I could always VC Nico Hines. So, yeah. But as it stands, probably Tedesco in my VC. I think that's something I'll consider as well. I think the closer that Manly game gets, the more excited I'll get. But mm. just, as we said before, I just don't know what you're going to get out of Manly. That's my only yeah. worry. Anything else, mate? Or we... Uh well, good, mate. Hit the frog. Let's We're done. Do it. Guys, thank you for joining us once again on Beers and Break Evens, brought to you by Blue Wealth Property. Reach out to Tony and the team on their website, or you can click on any of our social media content, and their tag will be there for Blue Wealth. Uh, go buy yourself a case of Kempy's Great Beer, bloke in a bar this week. We've also got the t shirts dropping tonight, the Father's Day shirts. They are absolute. Crackers, this one's best, Dad. There's three different options. They come with a six-pack of beer, a, uh, a cooler bag, and what else is there in there, Matt? And a stubby cooler as well. So uh, cracking value for that pack. Uh, old man's all around the country will absolutely love it. Make sure you check out the Supercoach Playbook podcast. And especially as we get to the back end, your <laughs> Stats HQ is going to become more and more important for people, isn't it? 
Yeah, ramping up, mate. Uh, lots of good tools on there. That's it. The, the VC loophole calculator. Calcul- Fucking got a pounding from me on the weekend. Good <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, My after, fingers were hurting. After months to his 140 yeah. on the weekend, I had that many questions about the loophole. I just went, go to the calculator, do your own work. <laughs> I don't need to answer this for you. You can work it out yourself. So, yeah, the VC loop calculator, pro- projected price changes, uh, the ownership starts, all there. So All there. Must have stuff. Thank you for joining us once again, guys. We'll see you next week.